see wherever he's going, we want to go. Cause we're looking at... Okay. Hello, everyone. This is What the F is Going On in Latin America, Code Pink's uh, weekly 20 minutes of hot news from Latin America. This is uh, basically our brown bag lunch, 20 minutes of news at 12 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. Um, today, we are joined live from La Paz, Bolivia with Code Pink co-founder Medea Benjamin. And so uh, we're also, um, we have our entire uh, Latin America team um, joining you today as well, Michelle Elner and Leonardo Flores and myself and Medea. So this afternoon, we will listen to some witnessing from Medea, particularly on the deaths that um, have occurred in La Paz over the last two days. And then we'll take uh, your audience questions and have a more in-depth conversation with all of you. So hi, Medea. Hello, good to be on with you, although it's just so sad being here and seeing what's going on but I'm glad we have a chance to uh, let people know and thank you for doing this. So why don't you give us a little background as to um, how you um, got to La Paz, how you were invited to come um, by activists and share a little bit about what you've been witnessing because we are not seeing much um, in the mainstream media um, except for US State Department narrative. Well, we were asked to come here by uh, groups precisely because as soon as uh, the coup happened, the coup makers took over the media here, and the media is pure propaganda. So they need international people to come down to tell the world what's really happening here. Uh, incredible censorship. And so we have been going around with different groups, particularly a wonderful indigenous women's collective and we've been helping to document uh, the marches the murders uh, the community efforts to oppose this coup as well as to uh, give financial support uh, we're helping them with getting uh, coffins today for the people who died these are very very poor people um, we're uh, helping them in their efforts to um, uh, contact the uh, people in La Paz because we're up in a city called El Alto. It's a million people, mostly indigenous, but it's now um, the part where the, the the gas plant is. And these people for now the last 10 days have been doing a 24-hour um, vigil to keep the plant closed uh, as part of their efforts to put tremendous pressure on this entire capital city, not letting gasoline for uh, cooking or gas for cars to come down to the city. It's incredible. I can't describe to you every block. I'm in a hearse right now going to uh, the place where people were killed yesterday. Every block is closed off. People have to jump out of this car to move the, uh, ba the barricades because the people in this part of El Alto have said no to the coup and they won't let any gasoline come down, except yesterday when the military came in in full force, shot at people uh, after uh, um, large amounts of, of uh, 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 tear gas. And um, they managed to get out about 50 different tanks worth of gasoline. But the people are right back today uh, even though there was so much repression yesterday, uh, barricading this place. Every single street is blocked. There are no cars getting by. The people are helping us get by because we're in a hearse carrying a coffin that's going for one of the people who was killed yesterday. So I don't know if that's, if you can understand what I'm talking about, maybe you could ask me about it if it's not clear. Well, so the streets are being blocked by the the appointed by the pro -able government people. The pro able no, people. The pro able okay. people. They are, are oh, blocking okay. the plant and blocking the streets, and they're saying with this coup government that is so uh, opposed to the indigenous people that has already committed murders in Cochabamba, 
we are not going to allow this country to function. And so they've created shortages of gasoline, of cooking uh, fuel, of uh, uh, products. There are huge long lines for uh, um, chicken, for eggs. Um, they're not letting things into the city. And this is an effort by thousands of indigenous people to say no to the coup. It's quite remarkable, a level of organization that you just I don't see anywhere else because uh, these communities uh, speak to each other uh, and are organized by community of indigenous groups. So that's a level of organizing we, we, we could only dream of seeing here in the United States right now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm not sure what is going to And a level of solidarity you could only dream of. Yeah. Every it's... business, you know, that people are contributing, bringing uh, food and water uh, for the families and the church. Uh, they're contributing by uh, putting up signs all over. They're organizing a big, big march today down into the city. Uh, and they're saying, uh, we won't negotiate with this new government because they are murderers. Uh, we want them out. So the indigenous population is the majority population within the country of Bolivia. And El Alto is, is what percent, almost 90% indigenous or almost 100% indigenous in that community. Yeah, it's the so, largest indigenous city in Latin America. And so yesterday, um, I guess I should let the audience know that Medea has been live streaming um, throughout the day, every day that she has been in Bolivia. And one of the things that um, I caught yesterday, Medea, was you talking with some of the people in line waiting to buy chicken. And it was a very interesting conversation you had with several people. There were people who were pro uh, Morales government, and there were a few who were not. And maybe you could share with us the different opinions that you're hearing and why people have the differences. Well, first, let me say that they had 13 good years with Eva Morales. Whether or not you were indigenous, um, this the economy was uh, doing great and um, people's lives were improving. But the idea that the indigenous community was gaining power um, was uh, too much for the uh, white highland, the, the, the white Santa Cruz people um, who are the ones who uh, are the elites. And they never liked having an indigenous president and they never wanted to see indigenous people in control. And so um, they have been you know, trying to organize a, a coup against Evo Morales for some time now. And um, now that this coup has happened uh, and the indigenous community, not only the indigenous community, uh, workers, um, all kinds of people, whether or not they were pro Evo Morales, they're now seeing how awful this right wing fascist government is and they're organizing protests. So when you see on the chicken line, you'll see people who now are blaming the scarcity on the protesters. They're blaming it on Evo Morales people and his party called the Moss Party. But there are other people who are just uh, coping with the shortages and recognizing it's what they have to do in order to get rid of uh, uh, the, the coup. So it's an extremely divided society, extremely dangerous. Uh, the level of hatred, um, the indigenous people are feeling so under attack and they are getting angrier and angrier. And uh, I only see um, more death and, and, and misery uh, in the short term and hopefully uh, a reversal of this in the medium term. So what, um, so you mentioned a reversal of this. How, how is that possible at this point? What sort of, are there governmental mechanisms that could do that? Is it going to be people power from the streets that do it? Is it the return of Evo Morales or uh, a confluence of activities that will make that possible? Well, right now, the people in Evo Morales' party, some of them agree to negotiate. Some of them don't want to negotiate. Some of the, the indigenous people are saying no to negotiations. So there are different positions that are happening right now. But the pressure that the, um, the indigenous community is putting on the government is intense. 
and the shortages are intense and um, they're going to have to negotiate. But uh, she, the, the uh, so-called president is supposed to announce today what her plan is for elections. And we will see how the people react to that. Uh, they are saying they want Abel Morales to come back. Whether or not he participates as a candidate in election is another issue. Um, but they feel that he should have the right to come back here while the government is threatening that they would arrest him uh, the minute that he came back. So right now the positions are extremely uh, diametrical and uh, we don't yet see the way out. Um, but hopefully uh, there will be more negotiations and international community getting involved uh, because otherwise this could descend into a civil war. Well, it, it seems from here, watching from what's happening from Washington, D.C., we, we saw uh, Abel Morales resign on Sunday, November 10. And I know, and Leonardo and Michelle, please join in here because I know the three of us have talked about this um, as well, that we were all pretty shocked, disappointed to see him resign and have since had conversations that it and himself as well particularly from his press conference now that he's um, has sought asylum in Mexico that it, he was basically saving his people by resigning and it appears that that it was a you know very honorable move on his part and that perhaps what we would have seen on the 10th was an immediate um explosion into civil war and now we're watching perhaps a slow simmer into civil war how do you i mean would you concur with that or what is your your sense yeah, uh, yeah. when i heard that he resigned and then other top leaders of the mosque resigned you know i was very disappointed and i said and, and thinking it was not a good thing and then i came here and i realized that people in the party were being literally held hostage we met uh, a union leader whose wife and daughter were being held hostage. Their home was burned down. Um, this was the kind of pressure that was being put on Evo Morales and the other top leaders, that if they didn't resign and they didn't leave, um, that there would be more of this. And so, yes, they were doing it uh, to save other people and save their family members. Uh, so tremendous duress that they resigned under. And Morales' sister's house uh, was burned down. So, um, you know, this is a, a temporary move that they made while they gathered their strength. And now the force of the uh, pro Evo, you know, it's, it's difficult to even call them pro Evo forces because you don't hear in these marches uh, chants that are about Evo. It's now chants about get rid of the coup government. Uh, that's the main thing. And that's bringing together people who are pro Evo and people who had uh, uh, opposition to Evo as well. Uh, recognizing that what's come to power is so uh, negative, so racist, so um, destructive that they have to get together. Uh, but the chants are more about getting rid of uh, the, the so-called president, um, getting the military back in their barracks, um, getting doing away with this decree that said that the military could commit abuses and not be held responsible for it, having the prisoners um, released, uh, those are the main demands that we're hearing on these marches. So, I, and I, I just have to tell you uh, to, to say I, I wish you could see what we're what's happening right now as we are passing through blockade and blockade, and the people are coming out to open up the road uh, for this hearse. Uh, it is quite remarkable. There are just hundreds and hundreds of people along the path towards the plant, uh, the gas plant. And uh, this is just an in incredible show of people power, how they've taken over the main roads and they will decide who gets through and who doesn't get through. Wow. People so I'm sorry, we can go back to the other issue. I just wanted no, you to no. know that this is just remarkable what we're seeing right now. We're so pleased to have you on the phone to be sharing this because these are not, uh, these are not scenes or visions that we are seeing or hearing about. Um, in the media here in the state. So no, it's wonderful to have you painting this picture for us. And I should just remind the audience that you can um, follow Medea on your own Facebook, on her Facebook page and see um, 
her live streaming. Um, she's got quite a catalog of, of video at this point since Saturday and more to come. So there's some live reporting that you um, all can see of these various incidences that she's been describing with all of you this afternoon. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about was you, you're clearly mentioned people calling this a coup government. And here in the States, it's been very slow, the narrative to develop the, the language into coup. Uh, Leonardo and Michelle and I spent yesterday um, on the Hill lobbying members of the um, Congressional Progressive Caucus. And, I, and the three of us can share with the audience listening, we were, was pretty, um, astounding how few um, progressive caucus members have actually made statements against what is happening in um, Bolivia. And so there's a few uh, reliable ones um, that have tweeted already. And our Hank Johnson, I will share with all of you, is um, circulating a letter in Congress specifically directed towards violence against the indigenous community. But what will it take, Medea, for us to change this narrative here in the states for people to understand that it was a coup no no one was shot no the tanks didn't run abel morales out but there was definitely a resignation under duress forced by the military what will it take well i think that narrative? Uh, i think that, that as time go, goes by we're learning more and more how this was premeditated uh, and we'll find out more of the details about uh, who in the region and the U.S. helped with this, because you just can't imagine in one week of taking over how they transformed this country. And they had to have it ready. They had, they've taken over all of the ministries. They've changed the ambassadors. They've changed the relations with other countries. Uh, they have uh, put in place new laws. Um, they have... Uh, um, taken over the uh, communications, the television, the radio, uh, the press. I mean, you just can't do that uh, without having off the top of war and had things in place. Um, so I hope more and more information will come out about how this uh, happened, who was behind it, and that it's important to say that there were many uh, leaders of the opposition who said before the election that there was going to be fraud, who said before the election that they weren't going to believe the results. And so this is a, a premeditated coup, and we'll just have to keep getting out information uh, that shows who planned it, how it was planned. But most important now is for people to realize that there is a fascist, right-wing, racist government in power that is destroying this country. So that's all very powerful. I, you know, there's one thing I wonder if you could comment because to me it was so shocking to see the self-proclaimed president um, inaugurate herself on a on a Bible, and a big oversized a Bible. big huge Bible, almost out of a cartoon, a Saturday morning cartoon. Yes, exactly, uh, a prop. And there, you know. For those of us who are from Latin America and, and, and have been activists in Latin America for any length of time, we, we all know and understand the history of Christianity um, and its influence for the past 500 years um, in, this, in this hemisphere, particularly Latin America and the Caribbean. And can you just address that a bit to see this, the, the, the reemergence of Christianity and uh, in conjunction with the extermination? of indigenous people it's a yeah, I mean there are many indigenous people who are who are Christian but what we have now in power are fanatic evangelicals and uh, we see them uh, marching down the streets talking about peace peace we want peace of course they're not talking about peace they're talking about a takeover uh, and they are using the Bible as a prop uh, to say that um, they want to take down the, the indigenous flag, the Wipala, and that the Bible is now back in, uh, inside the presidential <clears throat> uh, palace that uh, the, the God is, is uh, or has ordained them to make this coup. Uh, and so they are using religion as a front um, for this right-wing takeover. And uh, we see these evangelicals uh, all over the streets of La Paz uh, and they are so happy 
uh, with this new government in power. But really, um, religion is uh, the the uh, one of the justifications they're using. And we're uh, we've just arrived in Sankata, where the people were shot yesterday. It's still full of the military, and um, you know I uh, will get off now and join the people. But the um, and and you can continue on with uh, your wonderful other guests there. But I just want to say I'm looking right now at the distributor of oil and gas here called Sankata that is being guarded by military, fully armed uh, military tanks. And this is one of those pictures uh, that you've seen maybe historically where uh, the uh, military is taken over. Uh, uh, oil facilities uh, and guarding it and where people's blood has been shed uh, so that um, gasoline could go down to the richer people in La Paz. And so, and while the press here, uh, the Bolivian press has said that the people that were the ones who were uh, the violent ones, that they dynamited the walls to the plant. Uh, none of that is true. We're seeing it ourselves, and we'll send back more live stream. So thank you for having me on, and um, I look forward to um, more discussions about what's happening here and hearing from you all there um, what we can do to get our elected officials to not only call this a coup, um, but to demand uh, a reversal of this. So thanks so much for having me on. Thank you so much for being there, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Okay, bye-bye. So, Leonardo and Michelle, is there anything you would like to add to the conversation? Leonardo, you've been doing a lot of lobbying um, regarding Bolivian Americans here and what they're starting to suffer as a result of the coup. Maybe we could take a minute to address that. Hello? Oh, there we go. Sorry, I had a technical Sorry. issue there. I no, that's okay. It. That's all right. Oh, so I was just um, asking, you know, um, you have been working with um, the Bolivian American community here in Washington, D.C., and I wonder if you could just let our audience know some of the issues that are happening here among that population as a result of the coup on November 10th. Right. Well, Unfortunately, the, the, a lot of the Bolivian population was organizing, uh, the, the best organized folks were in the opposition prior to this coup, or at least prior to Evo's resignation. Uh, but now after you know seeing everything that's been happening over the last week and a half, yeah, I'm very happy to say that there's a, a good group of folks that are organizing against the coup, in particular because we've seen, like Medea mentioned, so many disgusting acts of racism and of white supremacy and of uh, these Christ fanatical Christian evangelical uh, evangelicals in Bolivia and so uh, and especially with the burning and the taking down of the Wipala flag so these folks are organizing now in DC and you know if you're in another city if you're Bolivian American it would really really help if you could call your representative and tell them to denounce this as a coup because yesterday as Terry was saying we went into about 10 offices and the message we heard over and over again was that yeah talking to Bolivian Americans is great but it's much more effective if it comes from people within their districts. So is there anything else that we, we should add to the conversation? I mean, we were so fortunate to have Medea join us live from the ground. Um, it, are there any questions from the audience or any, any uh, closing comments that Leonardo or Michelle you would like to make? You know, we try to keep this as 20 minutes of hot news every Wednesday and we're running close to 30 minutes, which is great, but... Um, is there anything that we should add or ask our audience to do at this point? I, I will, one thing I will add before we sign off is that um, we at Code Pink are building a Bolivia news page and we're on our website, codepink.org. We'll have a page dedicated to all of Medea's uh, videos that she's uh, made while in uh, Bolivia. You will also find links to our uh, webinars and radio shows that have been about Bolivia. And so it will be one 
media source that you can all go to, codepink.org slash Bolivia is where you'll be able to find all of that news um, on one page at your fingertips. I will also let all of you know that tomorrow Medea will be calling in to Code Pink Radio for an hour long conversation. That will be 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow um, on WBAI from New York City, simulcasting from WPFW in Washington, DC. We'll also, once we have the archive, we'll also put that on our the Code Pink Bolivia news page. So I don't see any additional questions. So any closing comments from uh, Michelle or Leonardo before we sign off and see you again next week? No, I think we just have to keep spreading the message and sharing all these videos, not just from uh, Medea's videos, but other intrepid journalists that are on the ground in Bolivia documented these disgusting massacres and these massive violations of human rights. So, okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for What the F is Going On in Latin America every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 20 minutes of hot news live uh, from the ground. And uh, thank you, Leonardo and Michelle as well. And we'll talk to all of you uh, next week. And please remember Code Pink Radio, 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, WBAI, New York, WPFW, Washington, D.C. Thank you so much.